so here's here's a foot. Actually, that's that same pony that we uh, talked about earlier that had been foundered of my daughter's. Um, we've got some bruising going on pretty much the whole way around the sole because of the uh, the change that was going on inside the foot. Pretty typical of what happens with a with a foundered horse. You can see the stretching of the white line at the toe of the foot, right in alignment with the center of the frog. The bruising all the way around the sole, but you can see we haven't removed sole on the inside of the part of the foot because there hasn't been much growth. Here's that same foot. Um, that's, the shoe has been attached with two nails and because there was stretching there at the white line we actually had to go in and do a hoof wall resection, remove the full thickness of the hoof wall and all of the wedge that was located between the bone and the hoof capsule which commonly happens with foundered horses all had to be removed and unless we did that the hoof wall wouldn't grow, grow normal again. It would continue to stretch and flare out. This is a heart bar shoe that we oftentimes use uh, with foundered horses and although this isn't the same foot with the heart bar shoe removed, it gives you an idea of where the weight bearing occurs in that foot and because it was in muddy conditions that this horse was in, you can actually see a nice impression of the heart bar shoe that was on that foot where the shoe was allowing part of the weight distribution to come through the frog taking some of the stress off the hoof wall and in this case the shoe that ha the foot that has the shoe removed we actually tried to keep the nails out of the front part of the foot which is the damaged part of the foot here's another horse that's been foundered and you can see how a mild hoof wall resection has been done but probably a more severe uh, resection needs to occur because you can see the area of the white or yellowish color where that wedge is in the front part of the foot and you can see the crease that goes all the way around the foot about halfway down on both front feet and unless that crease gets removed uh, or unless that wedge gets removed that, con that crease will continue to, to, to be there and that foot will never those feet will never get normal. Here's the bottom picture of that same foot you can see all the bruising that's occurring in the so sole you can see the darkened area at the toe uh, where the hoof wall isn't growing at all the heels have been trimmed back close to the widest and highest part of the frog at the back of the foot and then we chose to go ahead and apply a shoe and a pad to this mare. Um, whenever we apply a pad to protect the bottom of the foot, whether it's for bruising or uh, a reason like this more severe in the case of founder, it's really important that we use some kind of a packing material because we don't want moisture and manure and things building up between that pad in that foot um, because then we end up with really severe cases of thrush because that bacteria gets packed in there and because it's anaerobic when we seal that off and close off the air to it that bacteria really goes to town so it's very important to put some kind of packing underneath that f pad between the pad and the foot. Um, here's some pour in packing material that seals up quite nicely. Um, there's, a, there's a product available now, in fact there's several different kinds of impression material. This is a product that's available from uh, Dr. Brunk's vet clinic there in Grand Island. It's a two-part material that actually gets molded together. It sort of feels like uh, silly putty um, or Play-Doh and you mix the two parts together and it changes to a neutral color. Then you actually put that material around the frog. You have to leave the sole open because we don't want the sole to bear weight. But you can actually fill that in. It seals up the back of the foot and it actually causes that part of the foot, particularly around the frog, to help support the weight. So by not using a heart bar shoe but using the impression material, we can actually get the same effect as, as close to the same effect as what we would with the heart bar shoe. The one thing that the heart bar shoe will do that the impression material won't is we get the constant um, consistent amount of support for that foot um, and when the horse walks they really are pulling on the back of that coffin bone and so by having the frog plate on there um, it doesn't matter what position the foot's in we get the same amount of constant consistent support.